when we have broke out of Mariupol, uh, we were able to take out in the hard drives and cards around about 30, 30 hours of footage. Uh, and because of terrible connection or absence of connection uh, inside Mariupol during the siege, I've really been able to send only about 40 minutes of, of the, all of this. Of course, those shots which went out were very important. They, they went uh, on the IP and then to thousands of news outlets. However, I had much more. And at the same time, uh, we all felt very guilty because we left the city and we knew that there was no one, no journalists left at all. In fact, the day after um, Mariupol drama theater bombing happened and uh, there was no information, there was no videos or photos coming out, so we were so depressed. We knew those people who were probably tied there. And I thought of, I should do something more. Uh, I should do something more with that 30 hours of footage uh, to tell bigger story, more context, uh, uh, to show the audience uh, a scale, really, because in 30 second videos of one, one minute news, news videos, you can't really see the scale or, or even intensity of, of human suffering or of destruction. And therefore, the idea for the film was born. It was, I didn't know how exactly it's going to go, what perspective we're going to take. But yes, the idea of making something bigger and longer, that was yeah, almost immediately. Can you sort of explain to just how, I mean, so much of the footage that's in the documentary is so much more graphic than could ever necessarily be in news footage. And, you know, is that part of the motivation as well? Right, but in fact, in fact, these, these decisions about how much graphic footage we can show um, were made uh, during a news gathering. And AP back then published everything we shot uh, raw. So no blurs, nothing, just as it is. Because that's what AP does. They just uh, publish whatever, whatever we shoot. On, it was a much harder choice during the assembling the film because when you place an audience for 90 minutes into this chaos and this mess and this violence, uh, there is a risk of people getting too overwhelmed or even even pushed back by, by the amount of this violence. But at the same time, what you want to show, you don't want to go light. You, you just really want to show how it really was. So that was the main challenge of assembling of, of making choices while assembling the film. How do you show everything uh, and at the same time, like the, how do you show the gravity, but at the same time do not push the audience away? Uh, and I know, um, like yesterday during the screening, uh, there was um, <laughs> some cinemas even inviting, and that's a good thing, some cinemas inviting uh, psychological counselors uh, for the audience because the audience responses, uh, uh, we had already two screenings and the audience responses are very strong. People are crying, people are depressed, and yes, they ex express wide range of feelings from anger to sadness, uh, grief. That is what I, as a filmmaker, intended, intended to do, but at the same time, I, I realize that probably that's not easy for everyone. Absolutely. Wow, that's amazing. I, um, I, I'm curious how the, you made the decision to narrate yourself. And um, the first decision that was made is a decision to, to keep the film contained within 20 days and not going forwards or backwards. Uh, and that was a conscious decision because we made it, we wanted to, to resonate with the claustrophobic feeling of people being trapped. So we limited, we specifically limited this uh, film to a, a, a time, from day one to day 20. The siege itself is uh, 86 days. So that's, uh, that's the first decision that was made. And the second decision was made, it's a perspective. And I have considered, we have considered various perspectives. 
but we felt that uh, the best way to connect all of the stories of people uh, into a, a narrative arc and to show an audience a dynamics of this spiraling down chaos and, and fear and destruction spiraling down was through uh, the eyes of, uh, of a journalist. And that being said, the perspective uh, of a journalist is just a perspective. That's not the main point of a film. It's just a, a lens through which we see uh, we see the stories of Mariupol's residents, their death, and their suffering, the destruction of their homes. Uh, at the same time, I felt that we, um, that I'm, I can do it. I'm allowed to do it because I'm part of the community. I'm a Ukrainian. I was born in in uh, Eastern Ukraine, mm -hmm. and the photographer who worked with me was born uh, in the city, which is like next next to Mariupol, which got occupied. So this is our story too, including ourselves. Decision, including ourselves, in this story was dictated by that too, because it's our story. Yeah. I, I, what's so what I love about this too is I think there's often a misconception of, with audiences that all documentaries are journalism and they're just not. And but this is it's a documentary and it's journalism. And you know I I don't know what it felt like to be sort of telling that if you wanted to put more of your personal perspective in it, you know if you had an opinion. I know there was a question at the Q and A where someone had started asking you a political question. You weren't. You were saying you're not. That's not your motivation. Right. So that is another challenge. That is another challenge. Being Ukrainian, being a part of the community at the same time to keep a distance. That's that's actually starting from 2014 it was a challenge. But since I am employee of Associated Press and there are such a tough standards on on being neutral, unbiased. Uh, so you know, how do you solve that problem? How do you? Uh, and I think there is. It's okay to feel emotions, and it's okay to to tell the audience about your emotions. And at the same time, it's just important to uh, not to let those emotions to dictate what you show and what you don't show. And therefore, you you can actually see in a film there are very different reactions on a journalist. There are very different reactions on events. There are people who who thank journalists for doing their job and asking for to film uh, for the world to see there are people who who just call us prostitutes there are people who say we want to be in Ukraine uh, there are people who say Ukrainians are bombing us so all of that was a decision just to make a um, a story just to see the story on a bit of a distance while narrated uh, by me, it, it's still I still tried to keep um, keep it fair. Um, now that audiences have been seeing it, you've been in the Q and A. Says, do you feel like it's having the impact you wanted it to have? Do people seem to understand? Yeah, well, it's too early to say. You know, when we left Mariupol, uh, and we first so uh, we first been able to. Uh, read more um, news to watch uh, archives of those 20 days how they what happened to Ukraine what happened to the world while we were locked uh, I was surprised and stunned by um, an effect that our work had on uh, international society and on media space, and I also wanted so when we, when we were assembled assembling the film, I wanted to be a part of a story. It's another challenge. How 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 would you show these ripples of information or influence on the outside world and influence on the media space? Therefore, we have chosen specific uh, instruments to, to show that to show the news footage, and. Afterwards, we, we followed up with the m many characters, with many people who we saw in Mariupol, who we 
met afterwards who escaped or, or didn't. And we also asked the questions, what happened to you? And did our work influence, influence your life? And many of them, many of them thanked us and said that relatives have been able to find them because of the footage, or uh, they've been able to get help. Um, uh, uh, soldiers that, that were rescuing us got out of prison. Um, so the doctors um, and the officials told us that because of the uh, footage we shot and sent, it was easier to, to negotiate the Green Corridor, so even lives have been saved because the, gor the corridor was, was open. I'm really hoping for that. I don't know how much of that is our footage, how much of that is just what happened, but I really would like to believe that we did make a difference because I, I guess that's what the journalism is about, about to inform people so they make a certain decisions, so it makes a difference, but again, there was another mission to it also, to, to a film itself, just to, just to be there for, as a historical evidence of a potential war crimes. Um, it's again, it's too early to speak about it, but let it be there, and then maybe, maybe, when people want to look back at the beginning of the this full-scale invasion, they will have, they will have this evidence. Yeah, first draft of history. <laughs> I, um... uh, yeah, and the thing is, the thing is that, and what's painful about it, that when you watch 20 days, this is just a reference. There was day 21 and day 22, 23, and it went on and on, and it has been almost a year of the full-scale invasion. So. Every single day in Ukraine, things happen in the same way they did happen in the first 20 days. So it is not even a history yet. It's, it's present. And it's been a bad week. Uh, it's been, been really bad week. Yeah, it's been um, bad week. Every so week sorry. was bad. <laughs> yes. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I'm sure it's sort of surreal to be here and be on the other side of the camera while also knowing what's going on there. I mean, how are you, how are you sort of feeling and managing all of this? Uh, I just want to go back and after the Sundance we will go back and go to the front line. Same team that was Mariupol. We'll just keep working. That's the only way to deal with it. Just to know you're not leaving. You go and do your work. Have you been able to have any nice experiences at Sundance so far? The hardest and the, the nicest experience at the same time, but it's the hardest experience was the audience responses. Uh, this is the first time I see the wide audience response to to the film, and I hoped they will um, emotionally respond to it, and they did. But at the same time, to watch it, to watch people cry, and it's hard. And also, there have been yesterday on the screening, I've met a few people from Mariupol. They were in the front row, and uh, after the screening, they they went to us and they said, "We are from Mariupol." And our relatives were escaping from Mariupol at the same time as you were, and um, they were like, crawling out of the city under the, the shells falling around them. So that I didn't expect, but that is actually what I wanted for the film. Wow. 